Hey everybody, hope you guys are all healthy and safe. So last week I reviewed the Samsung Galaxy A53. This is a mid-range smartphone from Samsung that's aimed to take on the iPhone SC in North America and South Korea. These are Samsung's two biggest markets. However, in that review, I mentioned that in other regions outside of North America and South Korea, the Galaxy A53 is going to have major, major competition because in most of these other regions, I'm talking about Europe, I'm talking about the rest of Asia, we have access to Chinese brands and they usually pump out devices that give better value than what Samsung's doing. And the latest device to do so is here. This is the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G. It's a really long name. And also to make things more complicated, this is the global slash European version of the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G. It's different from the India version of the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G. So yeah, it's definitely a little bit confusing, but I think the India version is only for India, whereas this version is the one you will find in Singapore, Thailand, Hong Kong, um, throughout Europe. So this is like the official global version. Now this phone retails for 369 US dollars. So right away it undercuts the Galaxy A53, which starts at $450. So this phone is 80 US dollars cheaper than the Galaxy A53. And for the most part, performance, it's very, very similar. This phone runs on a MediaTek 920 chip. It's a six nanometer SOC. It's a mid-tier chip, meaning it's not gonna be anywhere near as zippy and fast as a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but it's more than serviceable for a mid-tier flagship phone, just like the chip that's in here, the Exynos 1280. In fact, I ran Geekbench on both of these phones and the numbers are very, very similar. The Samsung A53 wins in single core a little bit, but then the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G wins in multi-core a little bit. These are just benchmark numbers in day-to-day -day performance. Both of these phones, they feel equally powerful to me, meaning they're good for mid-range phone, but I'm someone who's used to using tip-top flagship phones. So both of these phones feel a little bit slow to me, particularly when you switch to the ultra-wide camera, there's always like a little bit of like a half second wait that you don't get from a flagship $1,000 phone. So anyway, the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G, you have a 6.7 inch OLED display, 120 Hertz refresh rate, but it's not an LTPO panel. So refresh rate cannot vary between one Hertz and 120 Hertz. You have to pick, you either stick to 120 or 60. Now there's a 4,500 milliamp hour battery in this phone, which is a little bit smaller than the 5,000 milliamp hour cell in here. However, Redmi gives you a charging brick in the package. You don't get a charging brick here. And the charging brick that comes with this phone, it's a 120 watt brick. So it's crazy. You can top up this phone from zero to 100 in like under 25 minutes. Now as for battery life, I use this screen at 120 hertz and I'm a pretty heavy user. So the phone can sometimes squeak through a whole day. Sometimes it does not. It's definitely not like amazing battery life, but it's acceptable, especially since you can charge this phone up so fast. Now you have a triple camera system in the back, headlined by 108 megapixel main camera. It has an aperture of f1.9, which is not the fastest aperture, but then the image sensor size at one over 1.5 inch, it's quite big for a mid-tier phone. In fact, the Galaxy 53 has a 64 megapixel main camera, but it has a smaller image sensor size of one over 1.7 inch. But then Samsung makes up for it by having a faster aperture. And on top of that, because this is 64 megapixels, it actually doesn't need as much light as 108 megapixels because the more pixels you have in your camera sensor, the more light you need to fill out all the pixels. Now in terms of ultra wide cameras, both of these phones have an eight megapixel ultra wide. This phone, the Redmi has a tighter field of view at 120 degrees. This one has a 123. Both of these ultra wide cameras, I'm just gonna spoil it right now, they look very, very similar. Like they're just serviceable during the day, but at night photos are really, really soft. And finally, on the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G global version, there's also a two megapixel macro sensor. You already know how I feel about these sensors. I don't really care for them. Now, if you really want to nitpick, the Galaxy A53 has a five megapixel macro sensor that actually is still not a good macro sensor, but it's slightly more useful than the two megapixel macro sensor here. I would save the Redmi device. Just look at it as a dual camera system on the back. 
around the front, you have a 16 megapixel selfie camera hidden in this hole punch. Now, even though this is not an LTPO panel, it's still a really good looking screen, particularly at this price range. It's AMOLED, so you get punchy colors. Viewing angles are excellent, and maximum brightness gets up to 700 nits, so it's bright enough to use outdoors, just not as bright as a flagship phone. And I personally think Mi UI animations are a little bit more fluid than Samsung's One UI. I feel this way even on flagship phones, so now on mid-tier phones, when the processors aren't the greatest, you definitely see smoother animations on the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G. There are some stutters here and there. You don't really feel that here. The animation is just super smooth all around. So in terms of all the major components, display, processor, main camera, the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G holds up very well against the Galaxy A53. It's like neck and neck. However, the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus wins in a couple of areas clearly. So the construction, it's made of glass and plastic in the middle. So it's a plastic frame, but with glass on the front and back. It's Gorilla Glass 5 covering the front panel, which is the same here, but then the back of the A53, it's plastic. While the back here, it's glass. And glass just feels a little bit more premium. It's cold to touch when you place your finger on it. And However, with that said, I do think Samsung did a pretty good job with the plastic bag. It actually feels pretty nice in the hand. Now the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G also wins in audio output because this phone has stereo speakers. Now A53 has stereo speakers too, but the Redmi device has a speaker grill on the bottom and top of the phone and they're the same speaker grill. So you get an equal sound output. And just the fact that the position is a little bit better, so you get fuller sound than on the A53. And if you want to plug in headphones, the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G has a headphone jack, whereas the A53 does not have a headphone jack. It's very hard to muffle the sound. The Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G also has excellent haptics. This is something that Xiaomi does better than anybody. Now, every flagship phone nowadays has good haptics, but Xiaomi is the only brand that gives you good haptics all the way down to like the $300 price range. Now, I already said that the MediaTek 920 5G is a pretty good mid-tier chipset, and for the most part, performance is fine. I was able to play most games on this without seeing any stutters or lags. And Okay, now let's talk camera. So the main camera, the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G, it's pretty good during the day. At night, it really requires a lot of software algorithms and night modes to punch up a shot. And for the most part, images are good in a vacuum at this price point. But if you really do compare against the A53, I find the A53's main camera photos to be a little bit more detailed and better lit at all times. However, the A53 has a tendency to cool photos to add a blue tint to photos. The colors are a lot more natural on the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G. Now switching to the ultra wide, I already said both of these phones ultra wide are just okay. I mean, for someone who's coming over from flagship phones, I'm gonna be a little bit disappointed by image quality, but at this price point, it's fine. Now in terms of video recording, this phone can record up to 4K 30, but I stuck to 1080 30 to get better stabilization. Even then, stabilization is not the best. You see a lot of micro jitters with every step I take, and videos are just a little bit soft. The A53 is a slightly better video camera. The video is just a little bit sharper, and you get slightly better stabilization. However, both of these phones just lose big time to the iPhone SE. The iPhone SE is the other mid-tier phone at this similar price range, and that phone's video camera just completely blows both of these devices out the water. So overall, in a vacuum, the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G, I think achieves its job of being a phone that gives you good value. Because for $370, you're getting a pretty decent 5G processor, a really good looking screen, like a great screen for the price, relatively premium quality for the price, and software that zips around, although it is only Android 11 here with MIUI skin on top. Now battery life, it's a little bit lacking considering this phone can definitely go longer. And I do think the A53 has a slightly better camera system than the Redmi device too. But again, there's an $80 price difference here. And on top of that, you don't get a charging brick with this phone and you don't get a phone case. With the Redmi device, you get a phone case and you get a really fast charging brick. Now one more advantage to the Galaxy A53 is uh, number one, brand recognition. Samsung is globally available everywhere. Samsung has stores around the world. While Redmi, particularly Redmi, is still establishing itself in some parts of the 
world. And on top of that, Samsung's phone comes with Android 12 and it's offering at least four years of Android updates. So that means you're getting Android up to Android 16. With the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus, you don't get the same four year guarantee updates and it starts at Android 11. So no matter what, if you're looking long-term, the A53 should get software support longer than the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G. But if you're purely focusing on value, then this is the best value out right now. So anyway, this is my review of the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G Global Edition. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel or follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews. I have a lot more reviews coming up. The stuff is just launching nonstop and I'm really damn excited about the Vivo folding phone. So that should be coming up soon. Thanks for watching.